Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to Why Don't Indians Respe Respect Personal Space, Acharya Prashant in Conversation 2022. So this is something I don't know anything about, but there was one video uh, where um, this person just got his camera and started recording all around him and there's a whole bunch of Indian people look, just staring at him. And he was saying it's, it's called the Indian stare, at least that's what he calls it. I don't know if that's a thing that they call it or not. And I'm curious, I think I asked this question before, I don't remember if I've gotten an answer. I think I have, but I don't quite remember. But I'm just curious. I, I guess it's just curiosity for them. Like, they may have never traveled outside of the country and never seen a person like that before. And, and it's genuine curiosity. But let me know. Is that what it, all it is? Or is there a little bit more to it? Um, and then this one, don't respect personal space. Again, is, this is mostly just all cultural things that uh, people from outside of culture don't understand, obviously. There are people who can really get up close and hug you all the, hug complete strangers and there are other cultures that even best friends and family members don't even touch each other <laughs> complete opposites and i'm guessing i is this true though because I'm, I'm probably it's not all over india maybe or maybe it's majority of indians do this i'm not sure let me know but anyway so let's go and get started does the person you are with encourage you to read you have to ask, what does he bring for me? Roses or books? If someone has a stake in making you better, that person will push you towards books. Books are what we all need. I'll say book types of books matter too though, because there are books that are <laughs> not really helpful anyway. Another thing we had uh, talked about and noticed was, uh, did you feel that, I know you had mentioned to me that if in Finland, two people see each other, they try to avoid each other, they'd keep physical distance, and even if they met, they wouldn't ask a lot of any personal questions. And I'm just curious, what's your experience been here? I know you said oh, at the yeah. hotel there was uh, something that happened? Uh. Well, yes. I mean, yes, in Finland in general, it's, I guess it's considered polite to just leave people alone, keep your distance, and most of not the... Not to do this? Yeah, yeah definitely not. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and definitely, like, there are certain things that are good etiquette, maybe. But if you don't know the other person, it does See, this again comes from just yeah. taking a bit from the saints mm. and discarding the rest. Mm. Frankly, this kind of uh, touch you behavior and pat you and hug you behavior, even if I'm sweating mm. Mm, and you too are sweating, I still want to touch you all over. <laughs> <laughs> This frankly comes from a very distant point of love. Mm. I do not want to treat you as distant. I do not want to treat you as the other. I do not want to treat you as an alien or a foreigner or, uh, uh, you know. So that's why I come even physically close and I feel entitled to do so. I can just come and slap on your, not on your face, on your, on your uh, back, back. Mm, mm. and uh, that's considered very jovial of me. Frankly, it is because of the heritage coming down from the saints. Huh? Do not be so distant. There is no need to give so much space to the ego. Come a little closer. But then love is not about uh, this physical kind of nearness. Love is about, first of all, knowing what is right, doing it for yourself and enabling the other to live the right way as well. So that's called really getting close to the other. Getting close to the other implies helping the other get close to the truth. That is, that is real love. So the saint said, get close to the other to enable the other to get close to the truth. That's a complete statement coming down from, let's say, Vedanta. Now, what did we do? 
we kept one convenient half of the sentence and happily disregarded the rest of it. Which part of the sentence did we keep? Get close to the other. Get close to the other. So this much we remember. Huh? All over Southeast Asia, this is, this is the culture. In a crowded place, nobody would mind brushing shoulders. If, if, uh, if, if someone goes past you uh, while brushing against any body part, any body part, the fellow does not even feel to say sorry. Hmm. Because it's, it's fine. Uh, why are you acting so distant? Why are you acting so special? Can't I even touch you? Hmm? After all, the saints have said that all bodies are the same. We are just the soil we rose from. So, why are you trying to act so pricey? What's special about your body? I can touch it. <laughs> that's not what we explicitly say. But in some sense, that's the feeling coming down from there. It's alright to not to treat the other as, uh, as distant or, uh, or alien or a separated one. But one has to know the f full thing. If you know only half the thing, that's uh, worse than knowing nothing at all. Hmm? Hmm. So we have people who would intrude into the other's lives. The concept of personal or private space does not exist. People happily barge in. Hmm? And they can ask you such questions. Um, they could even ask you, well, you know, how are your things with your wife? An elderly one can actually come and ask this. An elderly one from, let's say, the extended family and can come and ask you, so how, how are you doing in your <coughs> married life? That's pretty normal. I mean, so far, I mean, barging in is one thing, but if they're like from your family or something, it's pretty normal even in the United States. Um, I want to I want to put in a few words in here before it gets a little too far. Um, yeah, like there, are, like in certain parts of the United States, you have people who come up and shake your hand or pat you in the back or put their arm around you. Not too frequently, and a lot of people tend to just keep their space and just say, "How you doing? How you doing?" As in, not like uh, asking you how are you really doing, but more as like a hello. It's, it's really weird in culture, you know. <clears throat> Some just nod their head, just an acknowledgement to each other. Uh, but we keep our space, you know, and, and, and about the bumping thing. I mean, <laughs> that's, it's kind of weird, like, you bump and you just keep on going by. That is something I'm not used to. I say when every bump, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hit you. Because you, you, you collided. <laughs> An accident happened and physical contact was made. But, you know, it's... It, I guess in, in the United States, I think this is pretty universal that it's it's polite not to hit each other, whether intentional or not. But when you do, like accidentally, it's like, oh, I'm sorry. Most people tend to just say, oh, I'm sorry. You know, they just turn around real quick to say, I'm sorry. Um, most most of the time, I, I generally don't care unless like you feel like someone just went, do, does like that. You know, they really hit you, intending to hit you. So intent is there. Intent to hit you is one thing that you can, like, that's very rude, but... Uh, and there are people who, um, you know, they try to avoid getting hit and whatnot. Uh, when are you getting your daughter married? Somebody may even ask you, how much are you earning? Hmm? You are just standing somewhere and somebody can come so close to you. You can smell his mouth. And if you step back, that's rude. <laughs> the boy, if you can smell his mouth though. <laughs> So, these are all uh, corrupted flavors of love. Hmm? So they, they come from that tradition of love. India has a very strong thing about love. Hmm? An Indian may not know anything else. There is this in fact popular movie song uh, from movie Pura Ben Pashim, uh, East and West. Hmm? So, this popular thespian Manoj Kumar, he was the actor. Uh, singing this one. Uh, so, the line says, Kuch aur na aata ho humko, Hame pyar nibhana aata hai. 
we as Indians may know nothing at all, but, but we, we know, know love. what is love. <laughs> uh, we remain loyal, we remain steadfast. So, that obviously cannot be the case. If you know nothing at all, <laughs> you will not know, you will not know love either. But uh, somehow this thing has gone into the Indian psyche that uh, lovers we all are. Hmm? And uh, love means having some kind of uh, a right over the other's life. Yes, of course, in love you do have a right over the other's life. But in what sense? Mm -hmm. That's a question lost to India. We don't address <laughs> that question. <laughs> that's, that's, that's kind of a major thing that you need to answer, I thought. A right to over someone else. I mean, that's a bit weird. Probably that's not the right way to put it. It's probably, it's, it's probably hard to translate that, probably. It's like, you have a right to be in someone's life. Perhaps maybe that? As in to know someone's life and to be able to inquire in someone's life. Not necessarily a right to someone's life, but a right to and the know of someone's life, perhaps. Maybe that might be the phrase he was looking for. Because it's really weird to say I have a right to someone's life. It's like, that's mm, that's a bit like slavery a bit. But perhaps it, maybe it's meant more like, again, uh, a right to knowing someone's life. Probably that. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Let me know. Again, I'm not too sure. Um, yeah, that's very interesting. <laughs> I like the fact that it said it was kind of lost in translation. It, it, it's sad, but at the same time, kind of funny. Because, you know, it, generally you want to know why you're doing things, I think. But to just do them anyway, it's like, I know this means something, and you just do it. <laughs> it's like, it's supposed to be good. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of, uh, it's just, it's just kind of funny to me. I don't know why. But yeah, you do something, but you don't know why. And the way you explain it was because it was the, the second half was lost, either lost, well, not lost in translation. You're just, you're just forgotten, I guess. That's what he said. So we just do the first part. It's like, yep, yeah, we do this because uh, something. West knows love of the personal kind and no other love. Hmm. India was fortunate it came to know of a higher love, but it reduced that higher love to one of personal kind. Now I do not know which one is the worst tragedy, <laughs> not to know love at all or to reduce higher love mm. to a personal point. I would think the latter is worse. So he's saying that the Indian love is worse? I guess because it, it like he said, that it's it's worse to know some part of something than to know nothing at all about it. <clears throat> Which I've also heard Sadhguru say that too, it's worse like it's it's worse to know some portions of the truth than to know nothing about the truth at all. And and there's a famous saying that uh, reminded me of what he said was, it's better, it's, is it better to love, what is it? Is it better to love and lost than to have never loved at all? And it's almost like he's saying there, it's better to not have loved at all. Because then you don't know the pain, but then you don't know what love is like, which is, and I think in the song, is supposed to be the greatest feeling. So to have never felt the greatest feeling, is that better than to have felt the greatest feeling and then have felt really deep sorrow and pain? <laughs> it's a trade-off. Oh, that was it. Okay. <laughs> Let me rewind that last part, actually. No other love. India was fortunate it came to know of a higher love. But it reduced that higher love to one of personal kind. Now I do not know which one is the worst tragedy. To not to know love at all or to reduce higher love to a personal point. 
I would think the latter is worse. <clears throat> okay. Hmm. Huh. I, I, uh, I can only speak from the observation I made around here. I think I, perhaps, I don't know if respect is considered love, probably not. And I think there should be at least a level of respect between people. And to some degree, that's that's kind of what it is over here. It's not perhaps it's not love, but a certain level of respect. But the, of course, that's based on the individual. There are people out there who have no respect at all and don't give a damn at all, <laughs> and they'll do whatever. And then there's most majority of people. And again, this is probably throughout the throughout entirety of the world. So there's some level of respect. You know, they respect the spaces. If they accidentally hit you, they say I'm sorry, you not know, apologize for it. Um, but just have that level of respect for us. We are individual human beings and whatnot. Perhaps we don't, and that, that love that he's talking about is more along the lines of people that you know. Like, uh, like probably close friends and ob hopefully families. Then obviously there are exceptions to where someone may not have close enough friends or maybe are not really too close to their families. But ju those are generally the exception. So very interesting. Um, so let me know, is, is, is what he said true so far for maybe the majority or maybe the minority? I'm, I'm not exactly sure. Um, in, in the United States, as far as where I lived, it's respect, perhaps not love. They don't necessarily come up to you and touch you. There are some people who are very friendly and do that kind of things where they come up there and they give you a hug. They're just so happy and excited. Uh, but most people are... You know, they, if they if they introduce each other, they shake hands or they say hello and they introduce their names. Um, keep kind of a space. <laughs> Anyways, that's my reaction to why don't Indians respect personal space. If you like my content, please consider subscribing. Thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.